Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week on Isle Banner on the Fuel and Jackson podcast. Uh, this week, we've got Damon and Doug. Hopefully, Cody will be joining us uh, pretty soon. That was my dog. Excuse me for that. <laughs> um, and so this week, we're kind of going back to what we usually do. We're just going to kind of freestyle it, kind of just talk about some automotive news that we missed uh, while we were doing those uh, couple of specials. So, yeah, I think Damon wanted to begin with... Uh, with, with some news from the UK. Uh, hold on. Trying to remember. New Range Rover, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. New Range... <laughs> there we go. I do have some other more UK specific thing I want to show later, but the New Range Rover, that's a big thing. It's come out. Uh, I've written an article on it. It's a bit crummy article, I'll be honest. I think it's pretty good, honestly, other than the rear lights. Rear lights, not. Yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. Cause I mean, and when I first and, saw it, go, sorry, go, and go they've ahead. killed off the Rover V8. They have, they yeah. have got yeah. a new twin turbo unit, no more supercharged. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, that V8 has made so many silly noises in oh, it did. In, yeah, in British cars from what mid nineties to now, mm-hmm. and the XJ is gone. Completely yep. no electric version, nothing for the XJ. So it's really <laughs> only going in the Range Rover Sport now, I think. And the Velar. Yeah. And I think yeah. their refreshes are going to phase it out as well for this new twin turbo unit. So mm. it's the beginning of the end. Well, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the the uh, the, the lights, the, the tail lights, um, being the only bit that actually kind of look okay. Because um, I was looking at it online. Um, on the Land Rover website a few days ago, and I thought the whole car kind of was a bit too, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it looked a little, a little bit too, um, sterile, you know? It's like, it, it was like, t- it was like over-designed. It's like they, they tried to make it look too modern and futuristic and like not... It didn't. Ha- it doesn't have enough character lines, you know. It doesn't have that kind of nice, mm. elegant, flowing. Uh, it's just like a big slab of, a big slab of a, uh, um, metal, and that's that's kind of it, you know. It doesn't have that that old kind of charm. You got the the character lines. You got it going down like that, and it goes down again, and kind of goes like that, you know. So. Been too sterilized. Yeah. Been too modernized. Yeah. Kind of like the new Contosh. Yeah. Oh, what? don't even get me started on the new Contest, honestly. Oh, uh, we've yeah. already done that episode, I think. But, yeah, yeah, we yeah. did a while well It's been that, a bit yeah. sterilized. I think, yeah, I think all around has been a bit sterilized. But the rear lights are the worst because there are a lot of character in normal Range Rover rear lights. From the, yeah. They've always had that kind of square block thing from the original ones over to the 2000s ones, even to the last one, they had a similar style light, admittedly, with a little bit of change. Mm. And it's completely different. <clears throat> yeah, now, yeah, now, the, the just, I, I didn't even get a, a decent look at them when I was looking at it online, but I, I could tell that they weren't the, the nice, like, typical, classic uh, Land Rover lights. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know what, They've been thinking lately, honestly, because you, you said, as you said, they, they killed off the the V8. They're going to this twin turbo thing. They they made the, the new Evoke looks too soil as well. It doesn't have all those nice character lines they used to have. Um, honestly, it's and the well, the Discovery <laughs> that thing is cross eyed. It's been cross eyed since what, like 2016? I think what Range Rover yeah. have realized. Is that as long as they make the car look different to the old one, people will go out and buy it. They've what the what they've done is they've realised their brand image is strong enough. They can create anything as long as it meets emissions. It's slightly more efficient than the old one and slightly different looking to the old one. They're not even better, just different looking. It will sell. They're and I think they're BMW. taking the yeah they're taking the lazy way out with the oh. with the new cars. They're doing what BMW did, and honestly. All it proves, it's it's only proving that people don't <coughs> actually care what they buy. They just want to buy something that'll get them with, from with A the to badge. B about 75% of the time. 
And then when they go to, go to a party and someone asks, oh, so what are you driving these days? They can go, I've got a BMW, I've got a Land Rover, I've got a whatever they have, you know? Something just to, well, as, you know, as the slang goes today, they, they want to flex and go, ooh, look at me. Yeah. Imagine how many more Range Rovers they can sell if they make them reliable. <laughs> They're, they're supposedly saying they're retooling and restructuring the plant to hopefully get some more, eat some more reliability out of them. But mm. it's still built by dust, so it's still going to be terrible. But. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. But yeah, I mean that's that's the my biggest thing. Technically, I never thought Range Rovers until you get way back. You go, I don't know, like. 80s era they were cool i kind of like those models uh most of the new range rovers i really don't care for i just i don't know they're too i don't know no it's just, just they're just not good looking yeah they're just no. they, okay they're just big lumps of squareness <laughs> and yeah, that's true. it that's kind of what an suv is but yeah yeah i, well, I, I see yeah. i see a point though i see a point yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if I want to ride around in a tissue box, there's there's <laughs> options. Um, but I the mean, only the, sorry, Doug, you go first. I mean, I get it is hard to make an SUV look good because they are just a square in the front and a bigger rectangle square in the back. I mean, it's just what they are. But there is people out there doing it and trying to make them or give them some style. And there's those who just stick to that good old fashioned. We got a square up front. We got a bigger square in the back. It's good, you know. And, and it's we like, got some squares down the sides. Yeah, and I it, they modeled their car after a U-Haul truck. It's just a big <laughs> box in the back and a front, and that's all there is. And it, it's just some imagination. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the the thing for Ranger over the past ten years, I feel, is the V8, just for the sound. The Supercharger V8s have like pretty much no other SUV, I think. There are a lot of other V8 SUVs. Mm -hmm. But the, the old, the old what, AJ V8, I think it's called, they all have, they had their own sound. And yeah. now that's gone. It was distinct. And now it, and now it looks even more sterilised than the last than yeah. the last generation, and the generation before that. Yeah. It's a, it's a good car, but it's not a good Range Rover. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, I think if I was going to buy a V8 one, I would go out and get the, was it the Durango with the uh, LCAT engine in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, ah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or for but, that matter, the Jeep Trailhawk yeah. with the... Yeah. You know. The thing that annoys me is it's still going to sell like hell because the UK is very, very bad for brand snobbery. I mean, German cars have beaten out pretty much everything here. The what, the Mondeo was killed off by the 3 Series. That's why American cars never make it here, like Cadillacs, killed off oh, by yeah. German cars. Lexus, they sell less than, I think, I think they sold le 25 LSs in Europe. Because all this, of Europe? Just 25? Wow. I think so. That's why they pulled all their saloon cars out of Europe. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, they... Because this, so because in a long time ago, German cars were built properly and very reliable. People think they're better, so they just keep buying them. And same with the Ring Range Rover; they don't think they're better, but there's some sort of brand sense with it that comes with buying a Range Rover. Status. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like that the people who buy it. Me factor, yeah. It's like it's the same people who buy G wagons. And mm. just ride around on the boulevard with them at yeah. slow pace so everybody can see they have a G Wagon. Yeah, <laughs> everyone can go, Ooh, look, it has side pipes, and then they can mm. all just, yeah. 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 Well, so, come on. Uh, I mean, it's, no, side pipes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll admit, side pipes do look pretty freaking cool. Mm. But if that's your only goal is to spend $150,000 just to go 25 miles an hour down the boulevard, just to go, Oh, look at me, look at my side pipes, look at my G-Wagon, look, look at my big V8. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> it's got a V8! Go do, go make some V8 noises with it. God. Yeah. 
Trying to do donuts in your G wagon. Come on. Is that just him <laughs> up on its side? Try to track it. Try, try to unfold yeah. with it. Now that'll end up on its roof. <laughs> Will it? Yeah. Will it? If you track a G wagon, <laughs> what do you expect to happen when you have a toolbox on some low profile tyres going around very, very quickly around a track? Yeah, but all the weight's in the bottom. So your center of gravity is very low. It's not in the top. That's how they keep them that way. That's why when they off-road them, they don't fall over on every little rock they come to. They actually do extremely well, which is an annoyance to me because of the fact that most people never take it other than, you know, do laps around their cul-de-sac once in a while. Yeah. These things are serious off-roading machines. And 90 the right tires. people who buy them never take it out of there. And, and actually experience what they can do with it. So, no, yeah, so I think you, yeah, I mean, in 15 years' time for them to depreciate, and then we all go buy them, smash them around. Yeah. And then, you know, that's why you could track one. I mean, you, you could do it. Um, I would love to see a G Wagon drifting. I think that would just be oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine a V8 noise, just the side pipe shaking, and it's just going. <laughs> Yeah. I got yeah. a YouTube search to do when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. G Wagon V8 Drift. <laughs> I remember I seeing see one, do a full lap around a roundabout. Just just a full, you know. Just, full, <laughs> just four tires spinning all the way around. Yeah, just all the way around, man. Yeah. Just getting it. Yeah. I do like I do like I did like the Range Rover until this new generation. I like I liked all of them. Probably because I love the early ones, and so that just sort of trailed off, even though the new ones weren't as good. But yeah, mm. mm-hmm. yeah. Be interesting. So, uh, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Clarkson still has his Range Rover. I think it's two thousand eight, two thousand nine one. Yeah. He still uses that on his farm. I think his is a tw- uh, 2006. He said, I, think, yeah. I think on Twitter he said it's one of the most dependable cars he's had. <laughs> Which oh. is saying something. Yeah. Is right. that most dependable? Than Mind you, this is, the same, this is the same person that has the Excellent, which is an old Mercedes put on top of an old Land Rover Defender. Yeah. And an Alfa Romeo GTV as his other two cars. So not a yeah. high bar here. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver's probably the most dependable out of everything. <laughs> Just kind of been. You can't of course, there's not much there's that can go wrong. There's nothing to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not much. There's like five moving there's parts. There's nothing, though. So there's nothing to break. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I did see him and got his Jag up and running. He finally. did. He did. Yeah. That yeah. was an awesome sight to see, man. That mm, that that yeah. color scheme you put, man. God, yeah. that's just beautiful. It's. Yeah. I I did see how many get stuck on the side of the road. It's still... The defender. Yeah. Yeah. It just sums up Land Rover reliability in one good. <laughs> <laughs> and the AA reliability, incidentally, sitting for five hours at the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, no. So. Well, speaking of big new SUVs, um, have you guys seen the new Lexus LX? Now, if you want to talk about sterile and kind of ugly, that yeah. trumps the new Range Rover completely. That thing is hideous. I haven't seen just, it yet. Just so that the viewers can see what I'm on about, um, it's the 2022 Lexus LX. I'm pulling up a photo now so that we can all have the, the same got, kind of idea. And can I just right say, right. that front grill, what happened? It's just a tree right? grater bolted to the front. <laughs> they, it does. Exactly. At least it don't look all predator. At least not from what I could tell. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool. The only one I've really... And the rest of it is just a square. I mean, it, it is an SUV, though. Let's face it; that's yeah. kind of what it's yeah. supposed to be. The the only one I've paid attention to recently is the. Whoa! Now, see, that makes BMW grills look tiny. I yeah. exactly. Thank you. <laughs> it makes the new X7 look about that big. 
Yeah. Uh, the the only uh, one I've really paid attention to recently is the new 2022 Land Cruiser coming out. That wait, they're, they're making another one of them. They're making an. I I didn't see that. Huh. They're supposedly going to bring it back. So. Hmm. I was on the website a few days ago. I didn't see it. Okay. Let's... Cause I, it's well, there was a thing on Drive Tribe, but that was a couple oh, days. Oh, bringing so. it back! Yeah, look at that. Okay, now that that's that's hideous. That is truly really hideous. <laughs> that's, oh. Okay, and I just, just saw just, a just, I just saw a Liberty Walk version. Yeah. That, that was brilliant. Just two seconds of pure joy that they're bringing it back, and then just pure hatred of what it's coming back. <laughs> that's that's what it's well, supposed to look like. Yeah, I've got yeah. the same picture loading up. It just looks um, like one of those old Mitsubishi um, Shoguns, except... No, the Shoguns much. looked half decent. This looks like... The Shogun wasn't bad. Yeah, I gotta agree with Shogun, David on that. The Shogun, the Shogun wasn't terrible. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Shogun that could actually go off-road properly, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, this, this looks lo- too low, I think. Well, well it's this, probably riding off bags. Looks like the designer mm. sneezed when he got to the back bit, you know, because it goes, ooh, oh, yeah. shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of well, just... they'll probably make different renditions of it. You know, of course, mm. it being Toyota, they'll probably make a a touring edition type thing, and then they'll probably make it a more, uh, was it pro version, where it's the upgraded TRD series. Yeah. So they'll probably take that and it won't have all the plastic cladding around the skirting, I should say, around the bottom. And they'll probably uh, make it a little more off-roady. Because if you look, that, I mean, yeah, most of your Land Cruisers did have some things like that. But, you know, it depends on what, what series and the model range you want. I mean, the they're going to have to change the some massive grill. stuff to make they, it look They've good. got, like, yeah, one so grill hideous. bolted on, in, on top of another grill. Yeah. <laughs> They they pulled the BMW and they just kind of messed it together. Yeah. 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 Well, and eventually, you know, Lexus, the whole front end is going to be the grill. The lights will yeah. be inside the grill. It's just going to be all <laughs> grill. It's just good grief. It'll go along the side as well, all the way down the front end. <laughs> <laughs> it can just be riding around in some mesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bonnet's just gonna be full on grill as well. It's just yeah. not, it's just not gonna have a, a hood. It's no, the whole be, car's just gonna know. be one massive piece of mesh. Well, see, <laughs> the the Lexus couldn't have the Cadillac having the bigger grill, so they had to beat it. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was and possible. And then Cadillac with the Escalade. Yeah. They even got the bigger badger now. Look how big the badge is on that grill. Mm. I know. Speak, speaking of the Cadillac Escalade, though, um, and th- this is kind of a side note, um, just kind of a little funny thing I saw yesterday. I was driving with the phones, and I was stopped at a stoplight, and all of those kind of at, at the um, street that crosses Pokemon Zico, uh stopped at that light, I saw a previous-gen Cadillac Escalade that was literally had a waterfall of coolant coming out of the front. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna make it far. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. I mean, it was just, <sighs> just all like pink, uh, coolant. Just oh like, no. I, it yeah. looked like it looked like it was leaking out of the uh, maybe w- one of the hoses that goes to the uh, radiator, but I don't know. Oh, it, yeah, it, was like, like, uh, it was coming out of the front bit, yeah, kind of close to the grill. I was just laughing my head off. I was just like, what? Wow. <laughs> That's don't buy a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say, so, that sounds uh, like a problem. Yeah. Oh, if and it I was mean, the I hot engine, engine it would the just be all just... steam coming out of it. Yeah. I felt yeah. bad for the guy driving, honestly, because no, I think that, he had no. no clue that his engine was about to no, uh, hold... lock up because of all that heat, because it has no yeah. cooling. And he wasn't going to go bit. five feet into that intersection yeah. and it's being yeah. stuck, just stuck in traffic, just mm. walking. Better be paying attention to that heat gauge. Temperature gauge. Oh. didn't see oh. it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's another thing. A lot of cars, well, 
quite a few cars don't have temperature gauges for reasons I don't understand. Yeah. Like our old Astro, yeah, our old Astro, we had the water pipe go on it. A lot of steam came out, uh, and there was no. We couldn't drive it because home. We couldn't try and limp it home because there was no temperature gauge at all. Mm. Mm. I, I saw that same thing on a um, kind of mid two thousands model uh, BMW seven fifty i that came into the shop mm. on Friday. Um, and I was looking at the instrument cluster and I said, hey, what is the temperature gauge? It's just the tack and the speedo mm. and that's it. Mm. It's not even a fuel gauge, it's I, just the tack and the speedo, that's it. It seems very, yeah, it seems very sort of 2000s, 2000s these things, because I've only noticed it in 2000s cars. Yeah. Just lack of temperature gauge. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know why they do that, because the temperature gauge is a vital thing. I mean, especially mm. if you're in a BMW, but let's face it, that one has a lot of issues. Because <laughs> yeah. it's BMW. Yeah. Maybe that's why they didn't have a temperature gauge, because they know it breaks. <laughs> they just said, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. Better yet, yeah. just do away with the whole car, because the whole, the whole car is just going to break down eventually. Mm. So just do away with the whole thing. Just sell the badge. People still buy it for 20 grand or so. <laughs> yeah. Just the key, just the key on the key ring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, think you guys want to hear something ridiculous? We got a friend who lives in Pennsylvania. I'll leave it at that. And he has a one of the last model years of the or see it's either the last model year or the year before or the generation before Ford Taurus. Okay, Ford Taurus. Oh, yeah. So we're talking real early 2000s, late 90s, somewhere in that territory. If I'm right. And I'm going to say it's real early 2000s. And it's got like 60, 70,000 miles on it. And she had the nerve to tell us that she thinks she can still get $18,000 for that. <laughs> <laughs> she's, been, she's been spending too much time looking at UK Ford prices. I, I think she's been drinking too much wine. Um, <laughs> been smoking you're, you're, too much pot. Right? I was like, you'd be lucky to get 1800 out of it. She's like, no, I take immaculate care. It looks brand new. And it's like, it's still just an old Ford. I don't even care. When it was new, <laughs> it wasn't even worth $18,000. No. no. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Much less wow. now. Yeah. And somehow she thinks because it's getting older, it's going to be worth more. I'm like, not this ain't... Not everything a... that gets older appreciates Not yet. Not, not yet. May maybe in another... 50 years, but maybe. You do some very, very heavy mods and you plonk a big V8, a There's nice no, little house V8 in it, then yeah, maybe. But no. Yeah, if, you well, do, if you do the very good mod of scrapping it and buying something else, maybe. Well, yeah. If you, yeah, if you had a SHO version, yeah, yeah, okay. But you still, even an SHO version in top notch shape ain't gonna be worth $18,000. It ain't. Yeah. Top knots are maybe just... like. Eight thousand. What? Yeah. So the Taurus, maybe. Yeah, so the Taurus is the big one. So what would be the UK? The UK never really had an SHO because we had the Granada Cosworth. They were worth quite a lot of money. Mm. But, yeah. I think Even, that's the closest you ever got yeah. to. Well, no. We, although at that age, it'd be the Scorpio. So the ugly one. It still has Cosworth V6. <laughs> that's only worth eight grand, and UK Ford yeah. prices are insane across the board. Mm. So. And it, it, I just laughed because my mom just bought a 2022 um, Subaru Outback. She just got it the other day. And she came in and she was so happy. And our friend's like, well, if I can sell my car, you know, I'll have, I might just go get me a, a Toyota or a Subaru. She wants something like what my mom, now she's threatening to buy one like my mom's got. <laughs> and she's like, well, see, I can, I'll do good because I can get 18000 for my Ford. No, you won't. Stop it. Stop it. You know. <laughs> it's a forward. Stop Death lying. To yourself and to everyone in that, in uh, that house. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm dying if she goes to trade that thing in because they're going to give her like 1800 for it. And yeah. That's I, was, there was, there I was a dream on. see the look on her face when they said, yeah, we'll give you like 2K max for this. Yeah. Like, what? 800, 800 bucks if you fill up. Right. Because <laughs> we're going to sell it for five if you're lucky. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah. I love Mike, when there was... have no idea what cars are yeah. worth. 
Yeah. No idea. There was a dreamer it's on. Just, I can't just, remember if it was Auto Trader or Facebook Marketplace. A base model Ford Orion 1.6. So Ford Orion is like a Ford Escort, but with a boot instead of being a hatchback. Mm. Nine grand. Yeah. Admittedly, it had about 40,000 miles on the top. Nine grand. They wanted for wow. mid 90s. Well, basically a Ford Escort with a boot on the back. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Funny. I just think we had the Orion. I don't think we did. Hmm. I feel like Your Ford that was name different. kind of circulated, but we, we it, never actually true. got it. Hmm. I don't think we actually would got that model. If we did, it wasn't in that body style. I think maybe it was a, it was a different body style. But yeah. Yeah, we might have got that under the Mercury badge instead of the Ford badge. We could have, yeah, we hmm. could have. So hmm. Hmm. That, yeah. that's a possibility. Anyway, because that sounds very familiar. It does, yeah, yeah. Uh, so trying to think of that one, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh, that hell. that's hilarious, Doug. If I was like, yeah, eighteen k for this twenty-year-old yeah. Ford that was never even eighteen yeah. k when it was new. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and for some reason she thinks the value is going up because it's getting older. I think it's a Ford. I'm like it's it. not. Yeah. An E type, yeah. it's not an Escort yeah. Cosworth, well, it's, it's not yeah. a Toyota 2000 GT. Yeah. It's not it's a Shelby. A no, it's not yeah. a that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even a fully loaded version, it's a bare bones version. So, yeah, it probably worth 20,000 when she bought it brand new. <laughs> it's like, stop that, yeah. just stop oh that. But I can't if it's, if it's in mint condition, I could. I could see it being a nice car to own, but not for eighteen grand. For eight, for maybe two and a half grand. Mm. I mean, it's. I mean, if it's in the condition you say it is, I mean, some, some. There's going to be some weirdo collecting base model Ford somewhere in the US. So. No. Yeah. No. College but, kids who need a cheap car to run around in. You know. Just for <laughs> fun, I'm gonna them. go look up. You said maybe like an early two thousands model. So I'll, I'll put like two thousand. Two, maybe. Let's, let's go. Two, I'm going to try and find two, the most, fence, uh, most expensive four, 90s Mondeo. See if anyone's smoking as much pot as that person is. <laughs> well, I got a neighbor who's in a similar boat. I'll tell you that story. Uh, While well, you guys are looking, she has a 2007 Ford F-150 Texas Edition. Uh, oh. Which, when, well, no, when you look it up, literally all Ford did was put a badge on it. That's it. That no <laughs> upgrades, nothing. It's just an F-150 with a badge on it. Yeah. Uh, because I looked him up because she was telling me, no, it's better, it's better. It's got all these improvements to it. And they upgraded the suspension and all this other stuff. I said, no, they didn't. It's just an F-150 with a badge on it. Well, sure enough, that's all they done was because there's also an Oklahoma edition, a Texas edition, and a, I can't remember what the other one, there's another one. And um, literally all they did was put badges on them. And she still thinks she can get like 15 grand out of that truck. And I'm like, you're out of your mind. Uh, her son offered her, I think it was three grand for it. And she laughed at him and said, that's a special edition. You know how much that's worth? And I'm like, it's still an old F-150. It ain't worth nothing. Stop it. Stop it. You know? <laughs> just for context, I just found a 2002 uh, Ford Toyota SE. Uh, with 47,000 miles on it, that sold for 5,500. So, yeah, she's probably not getting more than a, a few thousand for this. Yeah. Because hers has, what, 70,000 miles? I, it's 60 or 70, somewhere in that area. Uh, yeah, okay, so, the, okay, no this way, one's she's a, getting... This one's yeah. not terrible, but pretty bad. The Ford Fiesta XR2i from 1990. So, not even the fastest one. They had the RS at that time. So, this was... The normal hot hatch version, forty six thousand miles. Can you have a guess how much they've listed it for? So a normal run of the mill one of these would go for about. It's a Fiesta. Eight, cheap yeah. anyway. Nineteen ninety Fiesta. Oh, I'd say forty thousand miles. Nine hundred quid. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's giving them some. Well, this is just the state the state of Ford fast forward market in the UK. Eighteen thousand nine hundred and ninety-five pounds. Oh, you're out of your gourd. <laughs> Look, my friend, that you. What year did you say? Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. My friend bought one a Ford Fiesta around that time. I actually 
probably closer to 93. And he didn't pay that much for it then. Come on. They didn't go up in value. Okay. It is an XR2i. So it's don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It, it's person it's, it's head not exam. like it's an escort cars worth or something. It's just you a can Fiesta. buy you can buy a Capri for less than that. You can buy a two point eight Capri for less than that. Mm. This shows the mental health of our world. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> telling you. A lot of XR two is about fifteen grand actually. Hmm. Mm. Is, I yeah, honestly PS... wouldn't have said more than a thousand quid, but okay, eighteen thousand. Oh, I think that's about eighteen thousand okay. dollars too much. Nineteen ninety nine Ford Escort one point eight LX. It has two thousand miles on the clock. Five uh, k. Nine point two nine and a uh, nine thousand three hundred quid, pretty much. <laughs> People are crazy. Okay, People so are... what I want, so I want a 25 year old Ford. That's not even a Cosworth. Do, do, do I want? Do I want? Yeah, it's do about I a want a 10 year old Lexus? Yeah. Hmm. Do I want a 1.8 litre Ford Escort, or do I want a? Let's try and find it, a Ford Audi Fiesta 8 RS8. 8. That's what I'll take for 10k. Or a Ford Fiesta RS1800, so the actually fast one. For, like, you could go buy a GT Mustang. At least you have a V8 rear wheel drive and a stick. Exactly. <laughs> at least, at least you got it. For, for less than that, you can get a 45,000 mile Ford Mustang V8 in the UK for less than that mm -hmm. Escort. Mm-hmm. Buy it. Buy is, it. Is, it a, is it a manual? You could put... You could put a grand or two with it and get a newer one that has the Coyote V8 to boot. Yeah, so, not in the UK, mate. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Ford Puma, 1.6, 5 grand. <laughs> we, we get Type R's for 3.5 grand, so I say that's a fair trade-off. Ford Probe. Someone's oh, Lord, that thing was awful when it came out of the factory, and it's so awful now. They were. They were terrible. Yeah. My, oh. what would he be my uncle? My grand uncle, I think it would be. He had a Ford Pro. He had a lot of cool, well, he had a lot of cool cars. Ford Pro wasn't one of them. He had an Escort Cosworth when they were around. So he, he had, had a, a few Cosi, Capris. and then he had the worst Ford to yeah. ever be he sold. Had a few Capri. He had the fastest car my dad's ever driven, which is a BMW 540i in the 90s. Mm. And I think it was chips. So that would have been like an E39? E34, yeah. E39. Oh, E34. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Although I don't know if the 34 came with a V8, so. I don't yeah. think it did. I thought it only came with the yeah, So, probably an E39. Should be, yeah. yeah. That, that's so, a good engine, yeah. That's yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. But the probe yeah. is four grand for a 120,000 mile car. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. about $3,999 too much. Mm -hmm. I never thought the probe was a good name. What made him, you know, want to name it after something an alien does to you when they? Because <laughs> it was a shit. It was a disgusting, terrible hunk of metal. So bad name yeah. for a bad vehicle. Yeah. Right. That was just one name I never got. Probe. Like mm -hmm. the go, the entertaining the uh, Star Trek fetish with that. Right. <laughs> I mean, come on. The, yeah. Ford naming, the Ford naming department had a field day on their coupes because they also named one the Cougar. Mm. Yeah. Which is a pretty that cool name, actually, if I'm being yeah. honest. Different context nowadays, though. True. 2.3. You, you could buy a hearse for 1100 quid. You could buy yeah. that Ford Scorpio estate host type thing that James May had. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm looking at. Although they, yeah. they don't have the Cosworth. Cosworth mm. one's quite expensive. No, Cosworth. Yeah. yeah, the 3D, even the, the 3D, because anything, because the thing Cody. is the 3D too. Cody is alive. Hey. He's here. What a phenomenon. <laughs> He's doing the fashionably late business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm way worse than that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, just making fun of old Fords and trying to guess how much to, um, going for yeah. used in the in the in the uh, UK. Yes. Oh really? 
What are, which one? Yeah, are they're all junk ones. But just yeah. to give you some context, so it's an old Ford Escort. Um, one point eight. One point eight LX that went for what? What, what was it? Nine Did grand. It? it was on on auto. Nine thousand. What was that one? That was eighteen thousand. Ford Fiesta, nineteen ninety four Fiesta XR two I. For eighteen thousand uh, British pounds. Yeah. You, you, that car wasn't eighteen grand, brand new. <laughs> it wasn't. It, the XR two I probably wasn't. I mean, so, isn't yeah. that the one that had no? No, that, that that was a box called Nova. That, never May mind. had the Fiesta, but he had the proper one. He had the RS eighteen hundred, which he, he you could did, pick up did. for what he picked it for less than a grand, which you could do yeah. in what 2012, 2013. Mm. Okay. And now, yep. now. May's car would cost about seven, seven and a half grand. Um, in the condition the XR is in, no idea. Silly money. Damon, did you guys get the uh, Ford Escort EXP that we had in the 80s? Probably not. Let me see. It was a long gated, it was a bit elongated hatchback, only had two seats. The two seat Ford Escort. So it was a shooting brake then. Eh, not really. No. Okay. Oh. Good. Just that's the that's Ford funny. EXP. Let me, let me look this up. Ford Escort EXP. It's yeah. like a midship Fox body without being it's actually a midship. Mm hmm. It's a two seater. <laughs> oh, What's no. That? That's not a shooting break. No, that's. The first no, generation. That's what, when you said like, shooting break, I'm like, that's, no. That's a terrible attempt at a coupe. That's awful. That's <laughs> No one knows if it wants to be a coupe or a hatchback. It can't make up it's, his mind. It yeah. has an identity crisis. <laughs> I think I'm just all this was good stuff. What kind uh, of engine no, was that? I, hope, I, I really hope we didn't. I don't think we did. <laughs> um, that, was, that was supposedly the sporty um, escort of the day. I actually know somebody. Sporty. Well, they're dead now. But I knew somebody. Had, yeah. I rode in one quite a bit as a child. Uh, which was mm. funny because it was one of the first cars. There's the back part is ginormous. Like you can completely sleep in that thing because the back end is so big. With only having the two seats up front, which didn't make sense. But anyway, <laughs> you had the two seats and then you had the steel bar, chrome bar, right behind the back seats. And then the rest of it was just storage. There was just nothing back there. Just, was just the so. chrome bar meant to be like a strut brace, except it's fake? No, I think it was no, just literally to keep your luggage from slamming dancing. into the dash when you stopped. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's for people to practice their pole dancing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a grab handle for, you know, when you was in the bank. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you tie it, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put your hostages in there. Uh. <laughs> Did the radio have auto and semi-automatic settings? Because those were the weapons. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I was just curious if, uh, if you know, the UK or Europe even got those or not. No. I just thought of that. Uh, no, we we cool. didn't. Yeah, we did. Did we ever get a coupe Ford Escort outside of the first two generations, which were coupes by nature? I don't think we did. But the Orions were all four doors, and then the the normal one was either a two door hatch or a four door hatch. So. Hmm. Now I want to know what the EXP is based on because it looks very Fox body. -esque. It does. It does. Yeah, it's got that kind of light. It's probably based off the Fairmont. <laughs> yeah, let's let's see what that. Also, I can see your point about the rear end being massive. The shut line is huge. It's pretty much yeah. it pretty much goes right up to the sides. You you could you could camp in that shut line. <laughs> you can. Oh, you, you could take the tailgate and go sledding with it. It's so. Big. <laughs> But see, back in the day, they, see, they, see, I remember these days well because, well, anyway, back then you could put all your children back there because there was no seatbelt law. So they just held on to the bar and called it good. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a closed ATV. Right? <laughs> just hold on to the bar. You'll be good. So, anyway. So, so do you remember a car called the Mercury Lynx? Mm -hmm. Apparently... Okay. The EXP was based on that platform. Okay. Inter well, I think the Lynx was slightly better looking, if I remember right. But well, both cars are hit. Let's do a side by side comparison. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, see. for those who don't, know, I don't know if anybody. No, I'm sorry. The Lynx was hideous. 
Is it maybe it is. Is. I remember it, but not terribly well. I've tried to block think, Bob the eighties out. <laughs> I really tried to block him out. <laughs> After looking at American eighties calls, I can see why. EXP was a far better look, which is yeah. not a big accomplishment because it wasn't that. I say I don't know if any of you all could put the EXP and the links up on the screen so other people who might not know what they are could see it. But oh, yeah. yeah. They, Best of uh, American engineering, I'm telling you. We could you. do a little screen show if you wanted. Or I think. I'll put it on it. Yeah. 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 There's a Ford or Mercury link, which makes me think it was based on the he's American S. 98 tab <laughs> laptop. <laughs> oh, I should have opened it. I forgot how hideous those really were. I do. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> what year was that? that good looking, no. Okay, can, 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 we, can we just focus on that hideous minivan in the background? <laughs> oh, this thing here. Like, I'm sorry, what I think that's a Chrysler minivan. I, I think it must be, yeah. The wheels look familiar. That. But let's talk about the wheels on this for a second. Oh. This does not look 80s. This looks like a no. 90s hubcap. Yeah, that right. was, yeah, that was probably stolen of someone's poor... Yeah. <laughs> not a 90s American car. You know Buick what that looks like? Re that Regal looks Regal? like the Park car Avenue, that's that the one principal I out of Phyllis Bueller's Day Off of. Even the color <laughs> and everything. That yep. baby blue and yep. that body style looks like Phyllis Bueller's Day Off principal, uh, his, his car. Yeah. I don't even know if that's technically a baby blue. That looks like a bad... Puke blue. blue <laughs> yeah, it's like a bad slate or something. I don't know yeah. what that is. Them 80s colors were hor Look, y'all, I grew up in the 80s. It was horrible. I'm telling you, I have nightmares. Beige, 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 beige. It ain't. Go away, 80s. Go away. It causes PTSD thinking back on it. it um, <laughs> just... Okay, RF uh, wasn't as bad looking as that, I think, if I can get a picture up of it working. I don't, know if it'll show, I don't know if it'll show to people on video, but I think I can show it to all of you at least. If, if you screen the show, I think you, you can show it to the... I'm on my phone. Actually, yeah. Oh, oh no, you're can... on your phone. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's hard for me to screenshot and share things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what, what I can do is go find a photo of that car, then I, I can screen that's show That's the base it. model one. In 1983, they had the XR3. What is this? I don't... Did they have the RS-1600? Was the RS-1600 out? I'm not sure. Oh, they, okay. the, that's the base model. The XR3 I looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. This one's a much better nick than that EXP, but I think those hubcaps are even worse. They're... Mm. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. didn't... I... Yeah. There was no I such thing hubcaps. as good hubcaps in the 80s and think, 90s, let's face it. I think it. they're just steel. Good hubcaps oh, yeah. stopped in about 1979, and then picked back up again in about 2006. Well, now wait a minute. I'm curious to what you think was a good hubcap in 1979. Mercedes ones. <laughs> yeah, ones off Mercedes, yeah. I don't think there's anything such or anything um, the, that makes a hubcap cool. I'm sorry, they're well, horrible. Okay, but then let's go 1970. Because the ones in the 60s looked brilliant. Those, like, wire spoke wheels. Oh. Yeah... They look good until one went rolling down the highway, then you only had three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of with Doug on this one. I don't, I don't like many hubcaps. Mostly because it's... So, I don't it's sort of like how uh, Ron Swanson describes skin milk. A hubcap is just lying about being a wheel. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it is. yeah there we go. Oh, That's bad. That's, Those that, are nice. That's, that's the next <laughs> one. Look like that was... That was uh, later 80s. Couch, couch like uh, casters. Those little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not good. Yeah. Back when he hey, thought. But can I just say? Yeah. Yeah, the 80s was a time. Good looking but... wheels now. Okay. And yeah. name. Okay. Toyota makes fantastic looking wheels. Audi, mm -hmm. yeah. BMW, uh, Jag. They're all making. Mm. Even like Lexus. Hmm. Even base model awesome. wheels look better now than they did years ago. Yeah. You know what actually looks bad now? It's all the aftermarket ones, like 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 uh, the I BBS wheels and those. Yeah. All those ones that try to look like they're from yeah. the 80s and 70s and, yeah. and, and 60s. I, st I still, I still say they work on the right car, on the period correct car. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm but not anything sure, outside of that. I saw an early 2000s Toyota Celica a few days ago with, I kid you not, 
Lego yellow aftermarket <sighs> plastic wheels on it. Oh, and I nicknamed it the Lego car because <laughs> it literally, it was the hideous, it was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs>